Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me now? Um, I'm, I'm Takako Koizumi, Senior Director, Evaluation Department of JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency. Thank you very much for joining our session at Asian Evaluation Week. Taking this opportunity, I would like to sincerely appreciate AEW Secretariat, as well as the co-sponsors, the Ministry of Finance, People's Republic of China, and the Asian Development Bank for having us in this uh, very important platform uh, for knowledge sharing. In this session, we will talk about Japan's long-term official assistance to China with a special focus on environment and infectious disease control. I'm really grateful to have Ms. Hu Xiaoyin from the Sino-Japan Friendship Center for Environmental Protection, our long-term partner organization, as well as two presenters from JICA Evaluation Department, Mr. Koji Fujiya, uh, General Director, and Ms. Yoshie Akimoto, Evaluation Officer in charge of this synthetic review. Since 1979, Japan has provided official development assistance, ODA, to China in a broad range of areas, infrastructure, agriculture and forestry, health and environment, among others. As China achieved a dynamic economic development, Japanese ODA has been reduced gradually, but environment and infectious disease have been constantly prioritized areas as they are cross-border issues and of great concern for uh, both Japanese and Chinese people. Last year, uh, 2019, on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of Japan's ODA to China, we, JICA Evaluation Department, conducted a synthetic review on JICA's assistance to China in order to understand its contributions and long-term uh, impact to Chinese society. Draw lessons and recommendations for the new Japan-China partnership after the end of ODA, which is scheduled in a few years. Please note that since this review was conducted uh, last year, the effects caused by the uh, COVID-19 was not included in the scope of the analysis. In this session, uh, the presenters will provide their insights on the long-term outcomes of the past 40 years of official development assistance, as well as future prospects. First, we are going to have Mr. Fujiya, our lead presenter. He will give us an uh, overview of JICA's long-term assistance to China, followed by uh, two case studies in environment and infectious disease. I'm going to turn to Mr. Fujiya. Please, uh, Mr. Fujiya, thank you. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Koji Fujiya, uh, Director General of Evaluation Department, JICA. It's our great pleasure to introduce the result of the synthetic review on Japan's ODA to China. Before presenting two case studies in the field of environment and infectious diseases, I'll show you the overview of JICA's assistance to China for almost 40 years. Next, please. We expect that participants of our session will learn three issues as follows. First, overview of JICA's assistance to China. Second, case studies on environment and infectious diseases. And then, prospects of Japan-China cooperation. Next, please. The theme of AEW 2020 is evaluating for a better future. Japan has been cooperating for China's economic and social development in various fields for these 40 years after China started economic reform. Through reviewing this cooperation, we'd like to share the key point of success and trustworthy relationship which we can utilize for our future. Next, please. Before we discuss Japan's ODA to China, I show you three graphs. 
The first one is the trend of the amount of Japan's ODA budget. This graph shows only the amount of general account budget. So this includes mainly technical cooperation and grant aid. But you can see the trend of ODA budget, which is on peak in 1997. And in recent years, the amount is almost half of the peak time. Next, please. This is the graph of nominal GDP per, per capita in China. I remember before 2000, Chinese GDP per capita was less than 10, uh, less than 1,000 US dollar, but its continuous economic growth raised the GDP rapidly, and GDP per capita became over 10,000 US dollar in 2019. Next, please. This graph shows the national revenue of Chinese central government. It is very similar with the previous one. Chinese rapid economic growth expands the revenue and it makes less necessary to depend on development assistance from foreign countries in these years. Next, please. Now we start to look overview of Japan's ODA to China. We we'll go back to 1970s before the economic reform. In 1972, diplomatic relation, relationship between Japan and China normalized. During the negotiation for the normalization, Chinese government decided to abandon the request of the compensation on World War II. At that time, China was just in the midst of the Cultural Revolution. One of the policies of Cultural Revolution is self-reliance, fully Genshin in Chinese. So during Cultural Revolution, Chinese government did not request any assistance to foreign countries. In 1976, after Chinese leader Mao Zedong's death, arrest of Gang of Fo, the era of Cultural Revolution came to the end. In 1978, Third Central Committee meeting of the 11th term of the Chinese Communist Party resolved the drastic change of the party's policy and began the economic reform. Next, please. After the resolution, Chinese government started to discuss the ODA to China with foreign countries. And December 1978, Japanese Prime Minister Masayoshi Ohira visited China and expressed strong support to Chinese economic reform. This is Chinese newspaper, People's Daily, Remy Bao, on December 8, 1978. This paper reported that Prime Minister Ohira expressed the willingness of positive support and cooperation to the request from Chinese government. And the next year, 1979, Japan's ODA to China officially started. Next, please. At the early stage of the ODA to China, key philosophy of both sides is Japan-China friendship, Nichu Yuko, Chongyi Yohao, in Japanese and Chinese. Japan supported infrastructure development like seaport, railways, telecommunication, and so on through providing Japanese yen loan. At the same time, technical cooperation and grant aid project also started. And the first project was named symbolically China-Japan Friendship Hospital, with the unprecedented scale as grant aid project at that time. In 1980s, the field and region of technical cooperation and grant aid project expanded widely, including agriculture, forestry, healthcare, and industry, etc. Some of Japan's NGOs also conducted active cooperation, and the representative group is Silver Volunteers, which has composed senior age volunteer person with long-term experience. Next, please. This is a photo of Lie Yungan Port, 
Jansu Province, which was constructed and expanded by using Japanese yen loan. The time taking this picture is maybe 1980s or early 1990s. Next, please. Through Chinese economy expanded through, uh, though Chinese economy expanded through 1980s, China confronted two important issues, and Japan's ODA to China also considered these matters in 1990s. One is this disparity between coastal area and inland area. Chinese government made special economic zone in some coastal areas, where using the foreign investment, the economy grew rapidly. Based on the traditional socialism, level and condition for life of the people should equal, but China allowed some regions become rich ahead of other regions with the expectation that the rich region will lead the other region behind them. So Chinese economic growth and disparity expanded, especially after the Deng Xiaoping Southern Tour in 1992. Japan's ODA considered this problem and through the discussion with Chinese government, many projects were conducted in inland area and rural areas to improve rural areas' livelihood. Next, please. This is the pot of vaccination activity for polio eradication project. This project was the first one for infectious disease control in Japan's ODA to China. Vaccine for polio was provided and transported to rural areas, and Japanese experts played active roles on especially on-site activities. Next, please. The second problem is environmental issue. Even though China, Chinese central government has started to prepare legal system for environmental protection in 1990s, but most of local governments still put emphasis to economic growth. Japan has experience about overcoming industrial pollution problem, and Japan expressed willingness to support China for environmental protection. Then both government decided to construct the Sino-Japan Friendship Center for Environmental Protection. The center constructed by using Japan's grant aid and Japan also provided technical cooperation to the center. Besides, in 1990s, many urban environment improvement projects were conducted through ODA loan. Kitakyushu City, which is a French city of Darien, the uh, Liaoning proposed to establish special environmental zone in Darien. The concept was slightly changed and became environmental model city concept. Japan provided for three environmental model cities, Darien, Guiyang, and Chongqing, ODA loan and technical cooperation project. Next, please. This picture shows the change of environment, uh, change of environment around Guiyang Steel Factory before and after the project. Next, please. These are the pictures of environmental improvement project in Jilin City, Jilin Province. In northern part of China, central heating system, which provides hot water and heat, is dispensable because of cold water. But the system was using coal, and it occurred severe air pollution. Japan's ODA improved the system and reduced air pollution. Next, please. In late 1990s, China continued rapid economic growth, but in Japan, economic bubble was burst and became severe regression. So in 2001, Japan formulated economic cooperation plan to China and make narrow, narrow down the cooperating regions and fields. After this plan, Japan's ODA basically limited the region where ODA provided to inland area. And the field also limited six key issues. And the first one, first key issue is global issues such as the environment and infectious diseases. 
Next, please. These are the important topics uh, after the economic cooperation plan. In 2003, SARS was broke out. Japan delivered in the first protection articles from infectious diseases and some medical e equipment. In May 2008, when the Great Sichuan earthquake happened, Japan dispatched International Disaster Relief Team. In Beijing Olympic of 2008, China-Japan Friendship Hospital designated as an official med uh, medical institution. Next, please. This is a picture of Japan's disaster relief team in Sichuan province. The team cooperated uh, with Chinese rescue team at on site. Next, please. This picture was the situation when Hu Jintao, former, uh, former chairman of Chinese Communist Party, visited China. He made time and awarded some of the members of emergency relief team. Uh, this is 2009. Uh, next, please. After that, there have been changes in both governments. And in recent years, Japan's ODA has been limited to a few fields like cross border pollution control, infectious diseases control, and so on. And in October 2018, when Prime Minister Abe visited China, he announced that the selection and adoption of new ODA project will end by that fiscal year. Next, please. Uh, we can see the ODA disbursement. Uh, Japan is the top by the amount. Okay, next, please. This is the overview of cooperation in the field of medicine, me medical and healthcare. When we start ODA in this field, we put emphasis to strengthen capabilities of urban-based hospital as a beginning. But later, especially after 1990s, our priority area had changed to dissemination of public health and medical services to the Midwest and rural areas. Next, please. This is the last page, and it shows overview of the cooperation in the field of environment. In 1980s, we support some cities to formulate the master plan to protect urban environment. In 1990s, we support to establish the Sino Japan Flagship Center for, uh, of, for Environmental Protection. In parallel with the establishment of this center, ODA loan was used to improve the environment of some cities. After 2000, Japan continued to support, but its efforts moved to policy support and human resources development. So my presentation is that's all. Next presentation is about the environmental case study uh, from uh, uh, Ms. Hu Xiaoyin. Uh, so Ms. Hu, please. Uh, good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is He Xiaoying. I'm from the uh, Division of International Cooperation uh, of the Sino-Japan Friendship Center for Environmental Protection. Uh, my center is a public institution affiliated to the Ministry of Ecology and the Environment. Of course, our ministry is just being upgraded to this current name. Previously, we are called the Ministry of Environmental Protection. And uh, uh, as Mr. Fujiya just mentioned, uh, some of the uh, co in, in environmental corporations, JICA has conducted over the past four decades. Uh, I would like to brief you on some of the um, environmental cooperation between the two countries especially from the perspective of our center. Okay, next slide. Um, okay, next slide. 
First, I would like to give you uh, some background information of our center. Uh, at, we should say that uh, um, our center, the estab establishment of our center, uh, actually embodies the wisdom of the statesmen of the two countries, the previous ones. It was a very successful one. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Fujia just mentioned, it was one of the projects alongside with also the establishment of the Sino-Japan uh, Hospital, uh, Friendship Hospital. Uh, actually, our center was about to be established in the year of 1988. And uh, the foundation was started in the year of 1992, and uh, everything was ready for operation in the year of 1996. So we can see that uh, altogether, after it was put into operation, we have been running for the last uh, 24 years. And uh, during these 24 years, our center has been uh, given great importance as well as great gain support from the two governments and it has already become a typical model of the Sino-Japan environmental cooperation between the two countries. Next. So this, this slide has actually uh, showed uh, the, the environmental ministers from both countries when they pay their visit to our center. We can see that whenever a uh, uh, environmental minister from Japan has come to China for a visit, uh, more often than not, they will come to our center because we are the, uh, I mean, in the field of environmental protection, we serve as a window for the collaboration and uh, uh, cooperation between the two countries in this field. Okay, next slide. Um, we should say that uh, during the last uh, two, over two decades of time, uh, we have, our center has established and developed into our own culture as uh, uh, cooperation and the development having been mutually uh, promotion, uh, promoting each other. Uh, we have done a great job in this following four aspects. We have become one of the technical supporting team of our ministry, uh, hosting uh, more than 600 staff. And also we are an incubator of new areas and new organizations. And also we are a window to, for, to going global, I mean, in, from the perspective of international cooperation. And the, be, of course, our main partners are from uh, Japan, but, all, but apart from Japan, we also have international collaboration with many other countries and the international corporate, uh, international organizations as well. And most importantly, uh, our center has become a window as well as a platform for Sino-Japan environmental cooperation. And this has been uh, recognized by both governments, actually. Okay, next. We, our center has gained a lot of support from the uh, Japanese experts, uh, especially by the estab establishment of the Japanese expert team here based in our center. Uh, after its foundation, we have several rounds, several phases of this kind of special team of Japanese environmental specialists working here in our center. And uh, they have dedicated their efforts and uh, great strength to the, uh, to the work of our center, to the development of our center. So we actually have had uh, uh, some of the basic projects uh, for, apart from the three phase of projects of our center, and we also have the uh, circular economy project. And uh, these are basically the things before the year of 2013. And after that, uh, 
the Japanese side has um, dispatched a lot of experts, as I just mentioned, to help us to uh, conduct environmental cooperation as well as educational trainings. And we have also sent a lot of our staff uh, to Japan for case study and uh, training sessions. Uh, uh, more than 3,000 uh, staff has had the chance to go to uh, Japan for this kind of training. And also we have also received a lot of um, equipment, I mean environmental equipments, the donation of such equipment from the Japanese side to our center. Next slide. So this has uh, showcased some of the ODAs we have received as well as uh, to received by other uh, organizations from the Japanese side. We have, uh, by using these ODAs, we have conducted the Sino Japan environmental conception plan for the uh, 21st century. This is one of the uh, projects. We have set up an environmental information network covering 100 uh, cities across China. And also, we have a lot of demonstrational projects all yielding grateful results. Next. Next. Yeah. Uh, we should say that uh, Sino-Japan Environmental Cooperation has been carried along ever start the establish establishment of our center. And uh, after, uh, starting from year two, 2013, we have officially started the, uh, the project of Environment Friendly Society uh, in year of 2016. And uh, Mr. Somino Kenzi, Kenji uh, is the chief advisor of this team, leading this team. And uh, we should say that starting from that year, 2016, uh, the content, the format, and the overall scale of our cooperation has undergone great change. And we have been more focused to the discussion, the deliberation of projects and the issues of our mutual concern, rather than the initial, the previous uh, learning and the uh, technical exchange stage. And also, uh, uh, at the year, uh, at the 20th anniversary of our center, that is uh, uh, 2016, we have had a monthly high-level uh, event. The then uh, environmental minister, uh, Marukawa Taya, Tamaya, Tamayu, uh, has come to our center to attend this event, and our then prior our then uh, minister, Chen Jinying, uh, environmental minister, as well as a lot of high-level officials has also attended this event and followed that from year 2017 to, 10, to 2019 and to last year. We have also had three events, uh, consecutive events of high-level uh, roundtable dialogue, which have uh, elevated the cooperation uh, for Sino-Japan environmental cooperation to a very high level. And uh, we have discussed a, a range of issues covering, including marine debris, uh, environmental uh, technology cooperation, uh, especially for marine related issues and a lot of other things. Okay, next. Uh, so I'd like to uh, give you a brief introduction of the ongoing projects. See, of course, they are mainly from the, uh, the two governments, also including the Environment Friendly Society, uh, sponsored with the partner of JICA uh, from the Japanese side, and also other projects. Okay, next slide. So we should say that uh, we have elevated, as I just mentioned, this, uh, at, at, at least from the perspective of our center, we have elevated this uh, cooperation to a very high level, at least at the minister level. 
So we have done uh, also some of the uh, study tour of arranging the director generals uh, of local EPBs across China to go and visit Japan to learn from their advanced experience. Uh, previously, we are arranging, we will uh, try to arrange in the third of this kind of tour this year, but uh, we all know that due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, it, it, it doesn't happen, but uh, we think we will continue to do that uh, in the future. Uh, through all this, we have learned a lot from our Japanese counterparts, I should say. Okay, next slide. So these are some of the pictures during our field trip, as well as some of the seminars and workshops. Okay, next slide. Uh, this is, uh, next I will go briefly of the positioning and the business area of our center. Okay, next. So as I just mentioned, these are the organizations incubated from our center. Okay, next. These are the pictures of our center. It's a very beautiful place. Hopefully everyone of you can have the chance to visit our center. Okay, next. Next. Uh, this demonstrates some of our main functions uh, of our center after we have conducted this technological reform and transformation development. Okay, next. So one of the major functions we are currently un uh, undertaking is the establishment and improvement of the system of the ecological environment technology and service development. It is embodied in a platform, uh, an online platform. It is a very essential, the leading one, uh, sponsored and also uh, by, supported by the ministry. Okay, next. So these are some of the pictures, offline picture, offline events. Uh, of this organization, of this platform. I hope you can have a chance to visit that. It showcases a lot of leading technologies from our side, and we're also hoping that the advanced Japanese technologies can be also showcased on that, on that platform. Okay, next. So apart from that platform, we also have other major businesses in terms of uh, environmental analysis and testing technology and reference material development. Okay, next. And also we have done some uh, great work for green production and consumption. Yeah, mainly uh, had done by one of our organizations uh, under our center. Okay, next. And also uh, for rural area, rural environmental management, it is also one of key uh, elements, functions of our center. Okay, next. Last, I would like to give you some perspective on the prospects of, the, uh, of our center and the Sino-Japan Environmental Corporation after ODA finished. Okay, next. Uh, one of our leading thoughts is that although ODA has currently facing its end, but uh, we are thinking that uh, environmental cooperation, environmental projects between our countries, two countries, will never end. And uh, we think it will have further uh, a strengthening and the promotion and the development in the future. Uh, but we are also uh, fully aware that we have to change the previous 
cooperation methods as well as the focus of our content. That is mainly due to we our functioning uh, and our role uh, as a window and platform between the two governments and uh, the very solid base and foundations we have built between our two countries and the cooperation uh, contributions we have made to the uh, collaboration between our two countries. Last, the last, the, 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 everyone before the last, okay, next. Okay, so these are the, some of the things we are going to do in the future. And uh, especially, uh, we think we have great potential to tap in the future, especially in the study tours in third country and the civilian collaboration between our two countries. And we can, our center can play a better role in this, in this part. Okay, last, next. And we are hoping that we can uh, give a, a full play, have a better role played in the future of Sino-Japan uh, environmental cooperation in the future. Okay, thank you. And sorry for the uh, delaying of the time. Okay. Next, I will give the floor to Mr. Yushie uh, Akimoto. Uh, she is evaluation officer uh, from the evaluation division of JICA. Uh, Japan International Cooperation uh, Agency. Okay, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Yoshi Akimoto from JICA. It's very nice to have this opportunity to share our experience with you. I'd like to introduce the analysis on JICA's cooperation to China in infectious diseases field. This is a part of the report for 14 years anniversary of cooperation. We reviewed many reports and conducted interviews from the Chinese and Japanese side and completed report. Today, we shared analysis. Next slide, please. Here's the contents. As Mr. Fujia briefly mentioned, firstly, let me introduce the trends in cooperation for infectious diseases area. Second, we will show you the con concrete examples of the projects, which show you how we contribute to China. Lastly, we will show you the ripple effects of the, those outcomes as a result of spreading projects impact and good practice we can utilize for the future. Next slide, please. Okay, next. Okay, let me show you the trends in Japan's ODA to China for this field. The most notable Japanese contribution in China's health sector was the construction of the modern medical system. As Chinese economy rises, the prioritized area shifted to poor inland area and cross-border issues. We can summarize our cooperation in three big groups, such as initiatives on global issues, China-Japan Friendship Hospital, and strengthening public health service in rural areas. Initiatives on global issues, not only polio eradication, but includes measurement of tuberculosis and AIDS. We also supported hospital infection control to prevent spreading the SARS. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, next we will introduce achievement of polio. Okay, it's okay, next slide. Thanks. Receiving the announcement of WHO polio eradication plan, China, which dominated 85% of polio patients of West Pacific region, the China was tackling on polio eradication measurement, but in 1989 and 1990, the polio patient increased drastically, especially Shandong province. Receiving the request from Chinese government, Japan started to support China. In technical cooperation, highlighted in pink and purple, uh, the Northern area in the pink, 
and a southern area in purple. We supported diagnosis of whether the symptom is polio or not, strengthened the laboratory of differentiation of polio, and early diagnosis and escalation prevention by improvement of laboratory. In grant A project, the dots, you can see green and red in the, east, the coast area. We supported by procurement of vaccine and purchasing cold chain for transporting vaccine. Technical cooperation started from the field survey. At that time, when child was contracted by polio, the family situation was very disaster because they had to have huge debt for treatment and small hope the child can find job. The JICA expert, Chiba Yasuo, was shocked by this and conducted survey. Why still existed the polio, even if the children received vaccination at school? He found out that there were the children without family registration because of only child policy. To cover all children, he gave vaccine candy anywhere in the villages. With efforts of these of those China, Japan, and international cooperation donors, in 2000, the polio eradication in China was announced by WHO. Okay, next slide. Let me introduce the background of this achievement. The key point was bottom-up approach and integrated cooperation by Chinese government, international donors in Japan. Japan had experience of, experience of polio education, eradication in 1960s. Japan supported China by whole country, such as Ministry of Health and Welfare, Foreign Affairs, JICA, and Ministry of Education, National Hospital Medical Center, and other institutions. Chinese government at that time already received support from international donors. And when Japan proposed bottom-up approach, which is candy vaccination to all children, Chinese government fully supported to implement it nationwide. Okay, next slide, please. After polio eradication by nationwide vaccination, to maintain the polio free and expand the vaccination to rural areas. JICA utilized the institution and facilities and conducted other vaccination projects, including measles and hepatitis B. To spread the vaccination, we supported the surveillance, local health service, and coordination with education sector by technical cooperation. To maintain polio free, the surveillance is necessary, which includes finding patients, diagnosis, analysis, and feedback, and examination violence in laboratory. Through these series of projects, the system was a strength. Next slide, please. Okay. Let me introduce about China-Japan Friendship Hospital. As a symbol of Japan-China's friendship, the construction of China-Japan French Hospital began in 1980s. JICA supported the hospital with equipment and human resources development, and it's now praised as top-class hospital in China. When Chinese government started economic reform after Cultural Revolution, the 80% of the population were living in rural area, and barefoot doctors were there with very basic medical kit. Chinese government decided to promote the medical system by integrating traditional Chinese medi medicine and Western medical. Then Japan supported construction of a big scale modern hospital. As you can see the slide, 
Japan is continuing to support for training of human resources and equipment supply by technical cooperation. When SARS occurred, China-Japan Friendship Hospital was one of the designated hospitals, and we dispatched experts by emergency support. Of course, not only our support, but Chinese staff in the hospital made great and continuous effort to become one of the top class hospitals in China. Now, this hospital leads thousands of rural hospitals by remote. At the time, lots of exchange, at the same time, lots of exchange program with overseas, including Japan. Okay, next slide. Next slide is strength. We will show you the strengthening public health service in rural areas. After 2000, we provided model of grassroots public health utilizing the family health concept. From the viewpoint of family, as a healthcare service consisting of health education, health checkups and health consultations for three groups, children and young adults, those of childbearing age, middle-aged and older. A framework including guidance and manuals was then created to conduct disease prevent prevention for infectious diseases and others. After the project ended, China has been using this framework for a follow-up on the project in creating the family health service. Next slide. Lastly, we will uh, introduce ripple effects on Chinese society and lessons for the future. Next slide. For ripple effects in Chinese society. First, building a platform Japan-China cooperation at various levels. As I mentioned, you can see the China-Japan Friendship Hospital is one of the platform. Besides, we have a connection between institutions and we have exchanges between cities. When the uh, hospital infectious control project between Guangzhou and Kobe it's uh, completed more than 10 years ago, but they still have uh, exchanges between the doctors. And next one is a uh, various contribution of China Japan French Hospital delivered from Japan China Corporation. Okay, the, this hospital, as I mentioned, leads the rural hospitals by remote, more than 1,000 rural hospitals. At the same time, the alumni who attended the training in Japan organized a volunteer team. They go to the rural area for the medication for free. Next one is the uh, utilization of project, okay, <laughs> management methods learned through the, this project. Uh, one interesting one is a PDCA cycle from the AIDS project in Gansu plan and do check and action this cycle, uh, that those management skill were utilized to the other project by the Chinese officials. And another one is a, a infection control, a hospital infectious control project in Guangzhou. John Nansan Shenzhen, the Mr. John Nansan uh, was attended in the Guangzhou. And after the project completed, he had a lot of seminar nationwide in China. And uh, he talked about how to control the infectious diseases in hospital. This is a ripple effect. Even if after the project, he spread the effect of the project to other areas. Then next one is a promotion of a collaboration with other department in implementation of community health. When vaccination in the, for the kids, not only the Ministry of Health, we also collaborated with the health sector and for, as a, for the school. 
Okay, next slide. Lessons for the future. Flexible cooperation framework for new development needs and policy changes. This lesson is more from the environment projects because after 2000, the rapid growth of Chinese economy and a global change, the needs from Chinese side was changing during the per project period. So we set rough cooperation framework. Then we time to time discuss with Chinese side and we change flexibly according to their request. And second one is a loads and strength implementation system for the ripple effects through other nation and target groups. As you can see the polio project. When Chinese government had leadership, the effects of the project was tremendous. Regarding for the environment management, waste management project, we propose recommendation to the law based on their field survey. Some ex experts in China mentioned that the recycle policy in Shanghai study from last July also was partially affected by this project. To sum up, when we spread the effects of the outcome of the model site, it is an effective way to reflect our outcomes to the law and strengthen implementation system. Finally, I'd like to introduce about the movie. We have a movie of infectious diseases uh, cooperation. Actually, it's included of the field survey and people's voice from China last year. You can show, you can watch the movie from our agenda. Uh, I hope you enjoy the movie. Thank you. And my presentation is completed. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fujiya, Ms. Ho, and uh, Ms. Akimoto for your presentations. Now, uh, we would like to uh, start a Q&A session from now on. Uh, we have received uh, we, ha we, have, we have received uh, questions uh, from the uh, uh, Q&A box. Thank you so much. And our first question is uh, from uh, qu first question is uh, what key metrics did Japan use uh, in measuring aid effectiveness? Thank you very much for the uh, question. Um, I would like to uh, answer very briefly, uh, and I hope uh, some of my uh, colleagues uh, would add uh, on that later on. We, Japanese Evaluation Department, uh, apply uh, both quantitative and uh, qualitative method uh, in conducting uh, evaluation, project evaluation. Uh, we also apply uh, impact evaluation to uh, some uh, uh, project in order to uh, precisely measure the uh, evaluation effectiveness. As for uh, this uh, uh, study, study review, review, we uh, yeah, conducted uh, uh, first the uh, yeah. literature review, review uh, such, uh, such as, as uh, uh, ex post evaluation, uh, ex post evaluation, uh, evaluation report on, on the uh, completed project, uh, which is which are uh, more than uh, 100, I think. And uh, we also uh, conducted a field visit uh, in various parts of uh, China and uh, had a, a series of discussion uh, with key, key stakeholders uh, from uh, both from uh, uh, Chinese side and Japanese side. Um, um, I don't know about uh, uh, if my colleague uh, can add some uh, something more. Uh, I, I really appreciate. Thank you.
EA uh, between um, Japan and China. Uh, um, we, um, uh, this is my personal personal opinion, but uh, uh, it's better to uh, to uh, look uh, to 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 look the view from the uh, what to say the human relationship or human friendship through through the implementation of the project uh, right, uh, between the uh, stake um, persons uh, concern persons related to the project so uh, um, of course uh, the direct purpose of ODA is uh, to contribute uh, to uh, social and uh, economic uh, development so uh, uh, so we, we 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 have to uh, check we have to measure uh, the uh, effectiveness from the uh, viewpoint uh, I mean uh, uh, how 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 developed uh, economically or socially but uh, 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 in some cases uh, 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 we, we can see uh, 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 the, through the implementation of the project, uh, we can um, uh, produce a good uh, personal relationship, good human relationship between two countries, uh, citizens. So uh, maybe uh, from uh, uh, evaluation department, uh, it, it, it's not so easy to cover uh, such viewpoint. But uh, uh, for example, uh, our uh, our um, our research institute of JICA, uh, uh, um, they published uh, some uh, report. Uh, research report from such kind of viewpoint. Uh, that's all. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fujia. And I'd like to add some points. Uh, we, when we measure our project effects, we uh, well actually we when we conduct evaluation for each project, project, we have uh, five standards effectiveness impact and efficiency and sustainability and uh, another one <laughs> and those uh, evaluation effect uh, actually uh, when we plan a pro project we plan those uh, met according to those standards when we plan and we set the goals and after the project we uh, we measure those project effects based on those indicators thank you Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Fujiya and uh, Ms. Akimoto, for your uh, additional comments on uh, JICA's uh, evaluation method. And uh, uh, since uh, it seems that uh, we have not uh, yet received uh, any other um, uh, any other questions uh, from the uh, uh, participant of the session. Um, I would like to uh, ask uh, some some uh, more questions uh, to the uh, uh, part, to, to the um, uh, presenters. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, my and, uh, my, my um, uh, first question uh, is related to uh, future uh, China Japan uh, cooperation or partnership uh, after the uh, ODA. Uh, since the uh, uh, theme uh, for this uh, uh, AEW uh, two, two, 
AEW is uh, uh, evaluating for a better future. Uh, I would like to uh, ask this uh, to uh, Mr. Fujiya first. Through international, through international cooperation. Why? Of ODA, he also expressed the possibility of equal and new cooperation scheme between two countries, which is not regarded as ODA. Uh, present world confronts various global issues. I personally recognize that it is much meaningful for the two countries to exchange experiences and knowledge on these global issues and to promote mutual understanding between both na nationals. And uh, from uh, uh, viewpoint uh, the, uh, field, I think uh, not only uh, environmental issue and infectious disease issues uh, which are, are introduced today but for example a society issue as much necessity for experience exchange thank you very much Thank you, Mr. Fujia, for your uh, comments. Uh, now, uh, I have uh, received, I have just received an additional comments uh, based on the previous uh, questions. Um, it, one moment, please. Uh, it is, uh, um, uh, it is about it's a, it is a question about uh, feeding the result of the evaluation, such as a, a project completion report (PCR) or post impact report, uh, to those programs or project design to help proponents uh, from other recipient countries to enhance their project de development capabilities. What were the uh, opportunities and areas for further improvement that you observed to strengthen project to strengthen project development, design, implementation, and evaluation capabilities of recipient economies. Thank you very much for the uh, additional questions. Um, I don't know, but. Uh, uh, probably uh, Ms. Akimoto or Mr. Fujiya, uh, could you uh, add some, uh, could, could, you, could, you, could you give us an uh, additional comment on that? Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you so much for the question. And uh, uh, I think uh, it relates to uh, our efforts of uh, uh, JICA Evaluation Department uh, of uh, enhancing the uh, capacity of evaluation capacity of evaluation uh, of our partner countries uh, through uh, such occasions like uh, um, tra group training and also the uh, uh, feedback seminar on each uh, project com on each project exports uh, project evaluation. Okay, uh, let, me, let me give some example. And to strengthen the evaluation, evaluation uh, ability, actually how to, how to improve. How to improve the implementing those projects. We had a seminar up in Vietnam uh, for the implementing uh, for the implementing agencies that we use the uh, role model that we use the cases project conducted in B Vietnam. Uh, as for the ex we took the example, we already uh, did. Uh, we already conducted the expos evaluation, and we showed the uh, the cases backgrounds and a project contents and the uh, results of the data. And we asked the implementing agency, what would be the, the results? And A or B or C or D, according to the each evaluation standards. And according to those seminar, based on those seminar, they discussed what was the, the factor of the success what was the reason they didn't, uh, the project wasn't do so well. And they withdraw the lessons, how to improve those projects. It's one of the, our idea and the feedback that implementing agency can do better for those projects. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Akimoto, for uh, sharing your experience uh, of uh, uh, capacity, evaluation capacity development with the Vietnamese government. Thank you so much. And uh, I would like to uh, also ask uh, Mr. Fujia uh, for the uh, um, for, for uh, another uh, feedback to the uh, on. Uh, to the new project. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Fujio. Post project evaluation, uh, but uh, but also uh, we are checking. Uh, when the uh, new project formulated, uh, how they uh, how how they learn uh, the uh, previous projects or uh,
Jackson Clown. Also check uh, all of the uh, project formulation plan before it started. So our evaluation department. Uh, so uh, what we check before uh, project status, uh, we check how they uh, introduced uh, lesson learned from a previous similar projects. So. Our department uh, have uh, uh, play a role to check the uh, project from the uh, 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 project formulation uh, point, and uh, after the project uh, project finished. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thank Fujiya, you, uh, Mr. for your additional Fujiya, comments of uh, 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 utilizing the uh, utilizing evaluation the results uh, to the uh, uh, ex, -ante, ex ante evaluation uh, of those uh, new projects. Thank you very much. Um, since uh, we have still a little bit of time, uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, another question uh, to the uh, presenters uh, related to the uh, um, Related to the uh, uh, related to the uh, the related to uh, the impact of the uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, uh, I at the first at the at the uh, start of the this sessions I have uh, explained that uh, uh, since uh, the uh, evaluation was conducted last year, uh, the uh, framework doesn't include the uh, uh, impacts of the uh, COVID nineteen. But uh, uh, based on uh, what, have, uh, what we have discussed uh, during the session, uh, probably uh, I can ask uh, some of the uh, presenters uh, on their thoughts of the relationship of JICA support uh, for infectious disease uh, and the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, what, will, what are the lessons learned for the COVID-19 uh, from the results of Japan's support to date? Uh, can I uh, ask Ms. Akimoto first? Uh, thank you, Ms. Koizumi. Uh, I'd like to uh, mention some points. The hospital infection is one of the big difference between the COVID-19 and SARS. In 2003, during the outbreak of SARS, a great number of cases of hospital infection were reported in China and uh, resulted in the expansion of the, this, the diseases. On the other hand, the case of hospital infection are much fewer for the COVID-19. In order to control hospital infection after the outbreak of SARS, China requested technical cooperation to JICA, and we have supported hospital infection control in Guangzhou by developing capacity of hospitals and health professionals. Further, the China-Japan Friendship Hospital included the issue of hospital infection in training co contents for rural hospitals. Of course, the Chinese government made great efforts to bring about this improvement, but we recognize that continuous assistance from Japan also played an important role. Thank you. Thank you, Yoshi, for your comments. And uh, uh, Ms. Hu, uh, Ms. Hu Xiaoyan, uh, can I ask you some uh, additional comments of, uh, from your side, uh, based, uh, from your side, uh, for example, uh, for the first uh, questions of the future uh, partnership of uh, Japan and China. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Yuxie. Um, I think that, uh, as I just mentioned in my presentation, that uh, since our center is the uh, is a kind of witness of how the two governments of Japan and China can establish, can establish, can build for the for environmental protection work. And uh, we think maybe uh, since I, I didn't have enough time, so I didn't give a very elaborate, much elaboration on the future prospect of um, environmental cooperation between our two countries and our two governments. And I think that uh, uh, as Mr. Fujiya just mentioned, when we are having this kind of cooperation, we not only do projects, holding seminars, and having training sessions, we also make friendship. Uh, we have built a lot of personal friendship among our staff and a lot of Japanese experts. Since we have this Japanese uh, expert team based here in our center, and uh, we have through them and through their organizations, we have built very long-term good relationship with a lot of Japanese partners. And these partners uh, has enabled and has, has helped us to build all this long history between our two organizations and the governments. And uh, based on their efforts, we have had very good cooperation effects and the results. Uh, this is something that uh, both governments and the peoples have, can, can see with their own eyes. And also, uh, our center, as I also mentioned, is the channel as well as the platform to showcase the, not only the goodwill of the two governments, what they can build, and what what they can what they are able to achieve, and what they have already achieved uh, in the area of environmental protection. And we have our position because we are the uh, government uh, public institution affiliated to the ministry, and also we are the leading uh, Sino-Japan cooperation units. Uh, in, 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 in the environmental protection area here in China. Uh, so on the whole, we should say that we are quite uh, uh, have the authority in this area, I mean, the Sino-Japan cooperation. So as we always say that uh, environmental protection is a kind of safe zone, or in other words, lubricants between our two countries, because we definitely will face some uncertainties for our future diplomatic relationships and uh, have this kind of twists and turns. And, uh, but uh, environmental cooperation can always serve as the lubricants because we have the base, we have the foundation, and we have this friendship, and we have the willingness, and uh, we also have the demand and uh, the uh, from both sides to carry out this kind of cooperation in the future, not only between governments and governments, but also uh, in civilian areas, I mean, also from non-government organizations. So I definitely think that we will, at least in environmental protection area, we will have a very promising future between our two countries in the future. And uh, also, by the way, I would like to add some comment on uh, the things we have done in combating uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, actually, uh, after, I think it's early this year, after the pandemic uh, has swept away a lot of countries, also including China and Japan, early this year, uh, we have had a very close relationship with our uh, Japanese on-site experts here in, in our center. And, uh, and based on our request, they have very swiftly 
uh, transmitted some of the documents and the materials, uh, the manuals they have for the um, waste disposal, especially the medical waste, because we have used a lot of special gadgets as well as uh, um, facial masks and special suits for not only the uh, the, 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 the people who have been infected, also the medical staff, the doctors and the nurses. So the, the team, the, the Japanese experts, they have responded very quickly and sent us the uh, very material we are in desperate need of. And we have uh, translated this uh, materials and have combined with our actual situation and it was very in time and uh, have uh, made great contribution to the environmental protection work related to the uh, pandemic uh, combating work. So we would also like to take this chance to thank our uh, Japanese partners for their great efforts in offering this help, very timely help. Thank you. That's some of my comments. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Hu, uh, Fu Mr. Fujiya, and uh, Ms. Akimoto for your response to the questions and also sharing your uh, experience. I really, I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, as a wrap up of the session, uh, in this session, we have reviewed the uh, long-term outcomes of Japan's ODA to China on cross-border issues, environment and infectious disease control. The fruit of the cooperation of the two countries has, has contributed to the Chinese society in many ways in terms of uh, uh, policy as well as uh, uh, systems for both environment control and healthcare. During the implementation process, JICA and the Chinese counterpart institutions set flexible framework of cooperation so that they can better respond to new development needs. This uh, will be a good lesson for international cooperation uh, with a country experiencing a, a very rapid economic growth, uh, industrialization, and also a changes in its society and uh, ecosystem. Another important lesson is the synergy effect by uh, collaborating with other uh, developing development partners uh, and also uh, departments, uh, government departments in different sectors in order to achieve uh, eradication of the polio or uh, promote circular economy. Uh, circular economy. Um, I think uh, such synergy effects played a very important role in scaling up and institutionalizing the cooperation outcomes. And they are uh, really a good example of coherence, a uh, concept that is recently uh, adopted by the DAC OECD as a new evaluation criteria for development assistance. Uh, now, uh, how will the uh, Japan-China partnership uh, evolve uh, after the end of uh, ODA? Well, um, as Ms. Hu pointed out in her presentation, the end of Japan's ODA to China does not mean the end of the cooperation uh, of the two countries, but the beginning of a new way of cooperation. And the outcomes of the ODA will serve as a strong foundation for the new partnership. With uh, COVID-19, we are in a very difficult time, but uh, we need to uh, change this crisis to an opportunity. The role of Japan-China partnership to support uh, other countries in Asia and uh, other regions has become, uh, has become important than ever before in areas such as uh, global health, climate change, among others. It is our hope uh, that the assets of the past 40 years of cooperation uh, between the two countries will be uh, utilized uh, by the people uh, of uh, both uh, China and Japan to address the sustainable and resilient development and 
uh, also to achieve the uh, SDGs, the vision of uh, no one left behind. All right, uh, that is all for our session. Mr. Hu, uh, sorry, uh, Ms. Hu, Mr. Fujia, and uh, Ms. Akimoto, thank you very much uh, for uh, sharing your important experience and insights. And uh, I would like to thank uh, all the participants uh, for uh, your interest and also uh, uh, questions. Uh, finally, uh, please watch, uh, please also watch the short movie uh, on this review. Uh, you can access uh, from the uh, AEW uh, website. There is a link on the page of our session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.